Thank you very much. Um, once again, uh, my name is Brian Tuttle, and basically I've been doing HIPAA compliance consulting um, since 2003 for all intents and purposes. That's when the HIPAA security rule, of course, came out. And as most of you realize, this law really was not being enforced all of those years. I mean, it was on the books, but how often did you really hear about anyone being uh, audited or sued or fined? Very, very rarely, very rarely. But that's, of course, changed now, and I will go through some um, basic what's going, basically what's going on now, what we need to look out for as compliance officers. Um, I've worked on behalf of the federal government as a contracted auditor, so I've sort of seen things from both, um, both the perspective of the, the hospital, medical practice, business, as well as the federal side as to what they're actually looking for, so I can sort of dispel myths versus reality. And lately, and this is becoming a major, major problem, is uh, le legal remedy under state law for wrongful violations of your protected health information. So I've been serving as expert witness in multiple court cases nationally as more and more attorneys are learning that you can sue under state law for wrongful disclosures of protected health information. And more and more individuals are learning that they do have a right of remedy under state law, so we're seeing an enormous uptick in folks uh, filing complaints and an enormous uptick in in litigated cases involving HIPAA. In fact, uh, litigation is quite frankly a bigger risk to us for, as a as a covered entity or a business than is the federal government. And I'll explain why through various examples as we move through this thing. Um, I personally conducted upwards of a thousand risk analysis since 2003 for for HIPAA security slash privacy, all the way from great big hospitals down to small little businesses, small little practices, tiny little apps being developed for an iPhone. I've pretty much seen it all, and I'll try to impart some of that knowledge to you guys. So let's move to the first slide here. Um, so just a little bit of history. The uh, Health Insurance Portability Act went into law in 1996, signed into this, uh, that year under uh, President Clinton. And it's interesting, when you look at the word HIPAA, most of us think the same thing. We think about uh, don't, don't disclose for health information. Make sure and make health information accessible. Well, there's a lot more to this law than that. It's, it's about portability of health insurance. That was the whole concept of the law when it first came out. Um, Obviously, when most of us think of the word, though, we don't think about what all is involved with this law, because there's a lot more to it than what we think about just being privacy and security. Let's move to the next slide here. Um, it's also known as the kennedy Kassenbaum Act, named after the two major sponsors. No need to remember this stuff. Just a quick little background until we get to where we are. Uh, next slide here. So if you look at the acronym Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. There are two key words missing in that acronym, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Now move to the next slide here, and you'll note privacy and security are not even in the name HIPAA, but by far they present our biggest challenges as covered entities and business associates or as compliance officers in general. Um, the, the key problem with this law is it's not written well. The government tells us what to do, but not how to do it. So it's very vague. It's, it's up to interpretation, definitely. Um, A does not equal B. A equals whatever risk dictates it equals with this law. And there's two words used all throughout the legislation, reasonable and appropriate. We are asked to take reasonable and appropriate steps to mitigate risks. And of course, we have these HIPAA guidelines that we need to follow and prove that we are taking reasonable and appropriate due diligence. Now, how do you quantify risk? How do you decide what is reasonable and appropriate? Well, that's the million dollar question. Bottom line is this, though. You have got to be proactive with your compliance. I say that time and time again till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't matter if it's the federal government auditing you or if you're being sued and it's what the prosecution is looking for because they're going to try to prove you've been negligent if something happens. 
Let me give you an example of a litigated case. So a practice recently, I was involved in the case, and it got thrown out by the judge because, let's just give a little background. 